So I ended that last video, cut me off at the second condition, so let's see how this goes. Um, so we ended in, um, right here where we were checking is the population, you know, cell phone bill is greater than 10 times n. And I would imagine that, yes, there are definitely more than 120 cell phone bills in the world. So these two conditions come together and we have independent cell phone bills. So now moving on to the third condition, and this is always the one where you have to stop and think. You know, the first couple of conditions you've done a billion times, um, you know, you, you should do, you gotta be fast with that. But when I get to the third condition, I'm gonna bring us to this sheet right here where I've got it typed up. Um, and this is from the same thing that you saw with T distributions when we were doing confidence intervals, is, you know, we're gonna kinda just go through a checklist. And it's, is the population normally distributed? Um, if it is, you're good to go. Is n greater than or equal to 30, then I can use a central limit theorem. And, you know, which it's not. Is n between 15 and 30? No. So now I'm here, where we know that n is less than 15. So we're allowed to proceed if a box plot or the distribution shows that it doesn't have any skewness and no outliers because t distributions are robust. So I'm going to write, um, and I've already got this written down because I've already done this problem, but n is less than 15. I'm going to say n is 12. I'm going to go to my calculator where you have all the data entered in your list. So if I go to stat enter, or no, I'm sorry, you want to go to your plots. And on your plot, I'm going to go to number one and set it up for a box, flyer that show, box plot that shows outliers. Make sure you've got L1, which is where your data should be, and the frequency list should also be L1. I'm going to do zoom nine and take a look at the box plot. So no outliers, extremely slight skewness. You're going to copy that box plot down like you have before and you just comment on it. So I wrote box plot shows no outliers and very slight skew, so we will proceed. And when I write my therefore statement, I'm going to write, you know, I'm okay with a T approximation is okay to proceed. So now that brings me, I'll probably just, let me write here. Now that brings me to our being able to draw a normal curve and get to the second, you know, the next part of the problem. So I'm going to draw the normal curve and that normal curve, let me move this up a little. I'll just write that right here. So I'm going to draw my normal curve. Now, in the middle of that normal curve is going to be mu. That's HO. That's what was in your HO, which is up at top, which is 50.64. So 50.64. You're also going to put your sample on there, which is X bar, which is 65.01. Now, things are going to be a little different here. Because we are doing a not equals to scenario, what that means is we're going to actually test both sides of the curve, the greater than and the less than. So this is called a two-sided test. We're actually going to go over here and we're going to shade on the left and the right. And so this is what we want to do is you want to find the distance between here by subtracting and make sure that you have the same distance going on over here. So if I, you know, so this ends up being 36.27. And all I did is I subtract 65.01 minus 50.64. And whatever that number was, subtracted that from 50.64 because it's symmetric. So whatever this distance is has to be the exact same distance over here. Now, I'm doing a significance test, so your goal is to find this area. So, you know, back in the old days, the nice days, we didn't have to worry about conditions, you know, we would have this, C equals X minus mu over sigma. Now, if you go to your Lime sheet, which I don't have right now, if you go to your Lime sheet and you look at um, your test statistic, it'll say, take your uh, um, statistic, minus the parameter divided by the standard error of your statistic. So what that means is your formula is going to look like this. So t is equal to statistic x bar minus mu parameter 
divided by the standard deviation of your statistic. And I'm in a one sample, so I'm getting this from page five of my Lime Sheet, which I do not have at home right now with me to show you. But the formula, if we had sigma, would be for means sigma over square root of n. Now, unfortunately, we don't have sigma, which you, you usually don't, which is why you're doing a t distribution. So what happens is, you know, this is the standard deviation of your sample statistic. We're actually going to call it the standard error of your sample means, which is s over square root of n. So that's what's going to go down here, s over square root of n, page 5 of your Lime Sheet. Okay, formula substitution. 65.01 minus 50.64 divided by standard deviation, which was 25.46 divided by the square root of 12. Okay, now I go to the calculator. Go to your test menu, stat test. Now I have, um, you know, we're, it's a significant test, so you're doing one through six. But we also, um, remember it's not a proportion, so that immediately you don't use 5 and 6. And it's not two samples, so 3 and 4 are ruled out. Now you're between a z-test and a t-test. Well, if I don't know sigma, I'm going to a t-test. Just if you accidentally hit on z-test, you'll notice they're asking for sigma, that, right there. Um, there is no sigma, so get out of there. So stat, test, and it's number 2, t-test. It's so one sample, means are t's, almost always. Um, now, on a mean, it's interesting because they could give you the data which you have entered in L1, but they could also just give you the x bar and the s in the end without giving you something to enter. So if you have those statistics, you know, without the list, you would just type, you know, you would type in this is x bar, this is s, this is n. But because I have my data, I'm going to choose this choice. Make sure your null hypothesis gets put in M0. L, the list is L1, and we are now doing a not equals to. Okay, so a couple things I want to grab. The t value and the p value that you'll notice. Okay, and then you'll just verify your x bar and your s that you got from doing stat calc one variable statistics. So let's copy those down. The t value is actually positive or negative because this is a two-sided test. So you actually found that t value and that t value. So it'll be 1.96. The p value is 0 0.038. So now we have to make a decision. Are you plurring or pegeffering? So just a quick little reminder, if P is greater than alpha, oh shoot, let me go back, sorry guys. I didn't, stat test, I'm doing a two-sided test. This should be a not equals to, there we go. I knew there was an error. Okay, calculate. And now my t value is the same, but the p value is what's important right now is for two-sided test, test is actually both sides, so it doubles that. So your rp value is 0 0.076. So let's change that. 0 0.076, which is now greater than our alpha of 0 0.05. So, so we are in a pegaffer situation. Pegaffer tins. Okay, so the first sentence talks about HO. If P is greater than alpha, we fail to reject HO. You just write that in words. Since the P value, move this up, since the P value is greater than alpha equals 0 0.05, we fail to reject HO. You never talk about HA when you're rejecting or failing to reject. It's always HO. Um, the second sentence is the TINs. There is not sufficient evidence. There is not 
sufficient evidence to conclude. Now, this is where, you know, you can say, like, whatever the alternative is, that, um, you know, the cell phone, the population mean is different than 50.64. Um, but a lot of times what's probably best is look at the question being asked. The question up at top is saying, let me point to it, is there sufficient evidence to believe monthly cell phone bills are different today than in 2004? So we've just shown that there is not sufficient evidence to believe monthly cell phone bills are different than they were, you know, than today than they were in 2004. So I'm just going to copy that. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude cell phone bills are different. Today than 2004, and um, there that's it. That ends our, our problem. We've made our conclusion. Um, so let me just explain this compared to the test that we did um, yesterday with proportions, where we did reject. Oh, first of all, double-sided curves. So if you haven't noticed, our p-value is 0 0.076. If we were to do a one-sided test which is what I did originally incorrectly, stat test, t test, let's say I do it greater than, which is, you know, going off of our sample, which was greater than our null hypothesis, uh, you know, you would have done a greater than, but in this case they wanted different, so you did two-sided. Um, you'll notice that the p-value is actually half of it, and that's because the shaded region is half of it. If you, if you were only doing the one side of the curve, um, you know, the p-value would be half as big. So now, um, yeah, so, okay, so that's, you know, there's your two-sided test, the difference between that. So here's what's happening, okay? This is a sampling distribution of all of the X bars, all of the samples of size 12 that we could possibly take and average up all those cell phone bills, and that's what this curve is. Now, the question that we're trying to figure out is, the sample we took, is it rare or is it just any old, you know, normal sampling variability that we would expect? You know, we know not all samples are going to be at 50.64 exactly. Some are going to be lower, some are going to be higher. It's when we get that super rare one that's like really far away from the mean. Um, and that's why we find this area. So we try to figure out, is that area big or is it small? If it's a rare sample, now we start wondering, okay, did we just witness a, a miracle, you know, something so rare, or do we start to question what's happening, um, you know, what their, what their claim is. So in this problem, 0 0.076, even though it's pretty darn close to 0 0.05, we consider this a, a not, it's not rare. It's, it's just a natural, it, you know, it, it can happen, and it happens more, I guess we say it happens more so than not, because it's not rare. And so that's just what happens in your natural variability in the samples. The samples are going to be different, and this is one of those different samples. It's not, an, you know, it wasn't like a crazy, you know, super low probability of happening. So that's why, you know, when you make your conclusion, we are failing to reject the null hypothesis. I can't cross this out. We didn't gather enough evidence to say the alternative. And that's really, you know, that's, that's kind of the difference between yesterday where we had a very rare sample, we were able to reject the null hypothesis and say, you know what, I, I think something's wrong. Where here we don't. This is just your everyday sample that, that is attributed to the sampling variability. So hopefully um, this helps and uh, you guys have a good day.